Good friends? Uh, yeah, it's rolling. He can, he can edit it later. We don't have to worry about that. Sure, okay. Okay. So, thank you guys. Uh, for welcome, welcome to launch class, our inaugural launch class. We were very excited, and we, uh, we know you guys have been doing a lot of more interesting things out in the snow tonight, so thank you for coming. And uh, uh, just to let you know, my name's Al, Coach Al, and the other coaches have this kind of a name tag, and uh, we are here for you. So has anybody heard of the movie called Failure to Launch? You remember that one? Failure to Launch. I was shocked when I looked it up. It's like 14 years old now. So a little bit of a comic relief to get started. This is where the name Launch Class came from. It came from this movie. Okay. We have technical difficulties already. Yes, we are. Okay, let's see, let's see if this works. So I was going to say that's one of the purposes of launch class to avoid that, but I know that's not our problem here. So uh, that's where launch class got its name. So the, uh, the idea here, of course, is to help folks get more successfully launched in their careers and family, etc. So we're happy you're here, and uh, that you, you're here, that means you want to learn, and uh, we're here for you. This is one of the first times in your life or you may have heard it's not all about you. Well, tonight it is. We're here for you because we believe in you. And we believe that uh, you have the seeds of greatness in you. And uh, what we said here is we only want to put them there. So let's discover it makes the most of those strengths. So hats off for you for taking the first step tonight. And uh, for the next slide. So the vision of launch class, some of it you know of, from the website already but to acquire some practical knowledge and insights for success in all areas of life. This is a little picture here of the seven areas of life, which you probably saw on the website. I'll touch on that in a minute. Uh, part of the idea is to help uh, people avoid the mistakes that we made when we were younger, and uh, hopefully uh, have more success in the areas to excel in all seven areas of absolute success. Improve the quality of life for all Albertans. Well, that's another, um, part of where launch class came from, is we, if we were to take a survey of all Albertans and we asked them, what are the measurables that we could improve on that would improve the quality of life for everybody? Uh, for example, if we could measure, well, we can measure the divorce rate. If we improve the divorce rate, would that be improving the quality of life for all Albertans? Most people would probably say yes, right? What about the rates of uh, heart disease, diabetes, cancer? Those are measurables, right? If we can improve those numbers, but most people think that's an improvement in quality of life. Sure. And we can talk about crime, we can talk about uh, income. If we can improve people's disposable income after taxes, would that be something most people would agree to? And what I've touched on there is the, uh, the big three. Most people uh, struggle at some point in their life with one of those three either relationships, which would be the divorce thing, or health and fitness, or uh, financials, which is, uh, these are some of the areas we're talking about here. The financial and career, and the physical, and the family would be divorce rates. So, um, most people have a hard time with these, and us coaches, we believe, we, uh, we sometimes think, oh, if we only knew when we were younger some of these things. So we want to help you know when you're younger some of these things. 
support areas. So, and lastly, what I said there is maximizing impact. So we don't want to, this is all about you initially, but we want to help you have a bigger impact with your life. So in other words, you're here with your hand up learning, but we want you to have a hand down passing it on to others as well. So we want to expand that vision for you as well. Lastly, everyone needs a coach. And uh, we, all, we all know top athletes have coaches, but did you, are you aware of the top uh, executives uh, in business and uh, in, in downtown, for example? A lot of them have executive coaches. So it's one of our foundational beliefs, everyone needs a coach. That's why we're coaches. Oh, there it's working. So the seven areas of life, we need a volunteer to make a bigger sign for us. Anybody? The seven areas of life, uh, we're going to draw a few conclusions from this diagram. This diagram came from a men's group I've been part of for the last four years. And it's just a good way of uh, looking at life and helping us understand what's going on. Because very often we end up, as I, as I was when I was 20, for example, one week I'd be feeling fantastic and confident about life. I think I had the world by the tail. And then uh, uh, a week or two later, total opposite. What's going on? I had no idea. But this is, gives us a framework uh, to understand a little bit of what's going on. So if we start on the left side, we have you there. And we have life squeezing down on us. We talked about some of that already. We have financial pressures, relational pressures, health pressures, all kinds of pressures. And we have God pressing up on us, perhaps encouraging us to go in a good direction. So we're getting squeezed. Another way of looking at that might be good conscience, bad conscience. Good conscience encouraging us in a good direction, bad conscience encouraging us, as you can imagine, temptation, etc. So we have a choice. We can move towards the problems, try to improve one area of our life, or we can go away from the problem to what we would call escape, for lack of a better term. And look, we have a bunch of uh, labels here. Fun, food, pleasure, shopping, porn, church service, wasting time. Yes, even church service can be not necessarily good for us. If we don't lose ourselves in church service, but neglect some of the problems that we have here. And so some of them are just perhaps out of balance. So we want to help uh, understand that we make a good choice to go towards the problem. What's interesting is God will beat us there. And so we don't have to try to do things on our own. Uh, this is the corridor, what we call the corridor of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And that's why we often avoid it, right? We go on the escape side of things. But ultimately what we're after is what we put on top here. We're after lasting peace, happiness, confidence, and fulfillment. And so all through our life, this is what we, these are our emotional desires, our, our motivations to do what we do. And so we're making these choices. And we're after these peace and happiness and confidence. And so we go over here and we get them for a short time, but they end up leaving us empty, right? Not, not feeling great. Not lasting peace and happiness and confidence fulfillment. But if we choose to go this direction and improve some of these areas of our life, we get far more lasting and satisfying good stuff up here. That's another way of looking at this diagram. So we've called it the Life Choices Diagram. This was developed by a bunch of guys in our men's group. So if you could think of a better name for it, please let us know. But right now, it's the Life Choices Diagram. And we'll refer to that, but that's just a, a way of looking at life. It's not, it's not a foundational thing. But it helps us to uh, understand what's going on and perhaps make some decisions. One of the ideas is we like to have some balance here in the seven areas. They're not obviously all the same priority, but if things aren't going well, if we're looking for lacking peace, we can look at here and we can see, okay, what are we missing? Maybe I need some help in one of these areas. Maybe I need to pick up a book in one of these areas. Well, that's the seven areas. And uh, no big guilt trips. That's another principle. Because you learn it in launch class, and you're going to learn some good stuff. But every now and then you're going to say, oh, I've been messing up for years in that area. Oh, big guilt trip, right? So a little bit of guilt is OK. It motivates us to improve, but we don't want big guilt trips. So no big guilt trips. And uh, they, one of the ideas is once you start making some little wins and moving in the right direction, you'll start to feel a lot better and you get more confident. You'll take on more challenges. And lastly, uh, I've heard it said many times over the years that God doesn't care where we came from or what we've done. 
if there's a direction we're going. And this has to do with a lot of direction. Obviously, this direction, you know, with God over here versus this gate. And I would say our coaches are the exact same. That's our that's our one of our perspectives. We don't care. We also don't. Where you've been, what you've done, we don't. Um, no guilt or shame allowed. Because uh, there's nothing that out there. There we go. Okay, I'm going to touch on a few things in the seminary. It's just to give you uh, what your appetite a little bit in the seminaries. So I'm going to talk about, this is a book that's not in the seminaries, but it's a very interesting book. You may have noticed on the website, in the resources section, Rick Warren, one of my favorite teachers, oh, my favorite teacher in the world. He wrote this book called The Purpose Driven Life. You may have heard about it, it's about 20 years old. And apparently it's the best-selling book in history after the Bible. It's quite an amazing thing. And it's, uh, I'm going to just read the first couple sentences because it's, it's fascinating. Uh, chapter 1, the very first sentence in the whole book, it says, it's not about you. Uh-oh. We start a launch class, it's all about you. He says, it's not about you. How could a book that says it's not about you become a best-selling book in history? How is that? It's very interesting. So I'll read the first two sentences. The purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment, your peace of mind, or even your happiness. It's far greater than your family, your career, or even your wildest dreams and ambitions. If you want to know why you were placed on this planet, you must begin with God. You were born by His purpose and for His purpose. So that's the purpose driven life. Life changing book. I truly believe the person who reads this and puts it down will be a different person than the person who picked it up. So that's just, just an example. So on the top of our seven areas here, there's spiritual. This is the book that we'll sometimes refer to on the spiritual side. It's called With. You can't even read it by Sky Just there. The simple principle is, is uh, the Bible talks about doing life with God. And uh, I should say, when we use the word God, if anyone is uncomfortable with that, um, if you don't go to church or whatever, don't worry about that at this time. We're not going to beat anybody over the head with the Bible. And frankly, you can go to church and church stuff. We're trying to talk about and teach things that we don't learn in church or at home or in school. So if you're not um, familiar with that term God or understand that word God or you don't like it, don't worry about it for now. We're not going to beat anybody over the head with it. So this is one of the books we can refer to. That's about with. That's why on this chart here, you start to go through the corridor towards improving things. God will be with you. And so the book talks about sometimes we learn in church or we get the sense in church that God is over us. And he's a taskmaster and he's just looking, waiting for us to mess up and going to slap us, you know, punch us, that kind of thing. That's not what the Bible talks about, but that's what some people get the impression of through church. Um, another impression through church that he talks about in this book is we do things for God and we live for God. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But it, it creates a relationship that's not quite biblical, frankly. This book talks about oh God, God is with us, for us, love us unconditionally, um, always there, and He's not waiting to punish us. So a different uh, uh, perspective than some people may have learned in, in, in church. Well, and family, this is the book that we might refer to sometimes. This book is written more towards guys, but it's written by Joel and Kathy Davidson. And so it's, uh, it's a great marriage book. This is one that is written more for guys. And this is one that is written more for gals. This is Becoming the Woman of His Dreams. There's a few others in this, in this case too. You can borrow these if you want to for a week or two and read them. We'll get a sign on sheet. So, but this is very fascinating. This is what we studied in the men's group. So there's one sentence that summarizes up this whole book. Fascinating. So we'll see if I can uh, put it on here. It says, towards men, it says, men, hopefully that's readable, if you will, i got to put two sentences on here, strive to hear your wife's heart. You read that? Is that okay? Hear your wife's heart and meet her dreams. Sorry, and meet her needs. Uh oh. You'll have.
have the woman of your dreams. That's quite a statement, isn't it? And it's very interesting in our in our ministry. Because we studied this book for about a month and a half. And I remember distinctly, this is about three years ago, after we were studying this book for after studying this book for like a month and a half, one of the guys, older guys in the group, he piped up, one of the more outspoken guys, he said, I don't know if I buy this. I my brother-in-law has been bending over backwards for over two decades. And his wife still treats him like crap. Ooh, what do you say to that? So one of the leaders then said, well, Don, you think she feels cherished. Thought a lot about it? No, I don't think so. Life bulbs went on for all of us in the room. Guess what, guys? If we, don't, if we do all the right things with the wrong attitude, we don't get any points. Heart, shock. <laughs> so that was a special day. That's why I remember it. So the measure, hopefully we can read this one. The measure, oh, no, that one's not good. I guess I better have to use the black one again. Because my other ones were over there. The measure of how we're doing how we're doing is does she feel loved and cherished? So I tend to think that those two sentences, just those two sentences alone, and we all have blind spots, right? And particularly men, we don't come to this world understanding how to make a marriage work. But those two sentences alone can save a lot of marriages. And we'll unpack those as we get into that subject on a different, on a different lesson. And of course, guys, don't worry. It's not totally up to you to satisfy all your wife's needs. She needs her friends. She needs God. You can't fill all of her needs, but these are some foundational ones that if guys will focus on, that'll solve a ton of problems. And so that's what guys don't feel so bad. There's this book too. Becoming the Woman of His Dreams. And don't worry, gals. It doesn't just say do everything he wants when he wants. It's not like that at all. But it's a great book. Okay, so that's that one. That's marriage, family. Family is mostly marriage. Social. I don't have the book here that we study in the men's group because it's called Band of Brothers, it's for men. But nevertheless, the social idea is that we need relationship, we need community to be successful. We can't succeed on our own. There's no more ranger successes in our world. We need each other, we need to uh, you know, work together with people, we need teamwork. And so that's the social part. Uh, relationships, people skills and relationships are a huge part of that. As a matter of fact, next week, the topic will be people skills that we get into. One of my favorite topics, people skills and relationships. So that's the social side. And you'll notice on the, uh, the life choices diagram, there's a heart beside these three first ones that we touched on, spiritual, family, and social. They all want our heart. God wants our heart, our family wants our heart, and our society and our friends want our heart. And of course, that makes us nervous. And so we'll, we'll unpack some of that, what that uh, how that works. So financial, we will sometimes refer to this book by Dave Ramsey called The Total Money Makeover. And it's pretty basic, but it's a big book. It's, it's uh, well, maybe it's large print. Yeah, it is large print. Because the, the basic idea is very simple. Get out of debt, stay out of debt. Sounds really easy, but very difficult for us humans to do. Because we want what we want, we want it now. Matter of fact, I'm going to say that phrase relating to the, the family marriage one. That's partly why I brought Rick Warren's book out. Like I say, he's, I listen to Rick Warren every morning driving to work, his Daily Home podcast. He loves to say, I can summarize 30 years of marriage counseling in two words. Grow up. Because we want what we want, and we don't want to compromise. That's how we, that's how we come up. So the idea is to, as we learn how to grow mature, we become more others focused, which is the last, the seventh one. We become more others focused. And uh, how to do that? How to compromise? How to work together? How to be full? Um, helping your spouse 
to be happy and successful. Anyway, so back to the financial one. Same problem. We want what we want, we want it now. The funny thing about money, and I've done this, is um, we spend money we don't have to buy things we don't need. To what? To impress people we don't even like. Why would we do that? You know, why do we do that? We're really call it victims of this peer pressure problem, right? You're keeping up with digital means is all those kind of things. So there's a lot more to it. Why do we do that? So we're going to unpack some of that because that's really important. If you can get out of debt, stay out of debt, and then you can start saving, then you have options open up to you. Options like obviously getting your money working for you, but even better than that, options of potentially obviously buying a house, but starting a business. And that would be the career one, which is the next one. So we may as well go there. The career one, this is the book that we'll sometimes refer to by Tim Keller, called Every Good Endeavor. Our uh, leader of the men's group, he loved Tim Keller. He said he's his favorite author, he reads all of his stuff. And this, the principle of this book is basically to help people realize that uh, work is not designed to be a, 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 a chore, a drudgery, and we spend half our life working. Why would we want to do that? Uh, why, why wouldn't we want to try to work at something that we're, we enjoy and we feel called to? So the idea here is that God's design for work is actually to bless us and to use our, use our talents and skills to bless others. And so that's back to the, uh, the principle there of, of helping others. And as we get more others focused, which will be the seventh area we talked about here, we get more of, this, more of the good stuff that we're asking for, that we're after. Lasting peace, happiness, confidence, fulfillment as we get more others focused. But there's a balance there. We can lose ourselves in service to others and, uh, and neglect ourselves and then uh, as useful to other people. So there's a balance there. That word balance comes up a lot. Balance work and family, balance eating this food versus that food. Like I said, balance hand up learning and hand down helping. So a lot of balance in life. And, um, coaches are good for that, helping us to find good balance. That's the career piece, and uh, I'll, I'll add one piece of the career. I alluded to it on the financial. When we save our money, we can potentially have the opportunity to be in business for ourselves, and that's a real, that's a part that's not taught in school and at home. So we want to touch on that. We have a number of guest speakers we'd like to come in some of these areas, but one of them for sure is that one. I want to put a couple of business owners in front of you, successful business owners, to help understand kind of how that works and how those options work. So that's career. The physical one which I would, I would call health and fitness. We sometimes will use this book, or refer to this book called the Daniel Plan, which is on the website. There's a really good website for this book. And the, the basic idea of the book is uh, what you call the, the mind-body connection, and how they're intertwined, they're, they're tightly intertwined. In other words, when we're, sometimes when we're wondering what's going on, I don't have any peace, happiness, confidence, fulfillment, What's going on in my life? And I look at all these seven areas except physical, and I say, well, I'm doing okay there. What's the matter? Well, sometimes we're just not healthy as what we need to be. We may even hurry for a while and it gets up, we don't even know. We have poor energy, and uh, we're not, perhaps not thinking clearly, things like that. So that's the, that's the mind-body connection. That's the, the basic idea of the Daniel plan. I'll throw a couple other thoughts in there. Um, I'm a researcher by nature, and that's why I'm an investment advisor. But I've really dug deep into this, uh, this health one, this is the passion one. And what I've found is that a little bit of knowledge makes all the difference in the world. Knowledge of perhaps eating, perhaps physical fitness, lots of different factors. Um, this is an area that we don't learn in school. You know, nutrition and health, how to, how to be strong and healthy. And so my experience is it's easier than we think. A little bit of knowledge because I know a lot of people have struggled in this area. You talk about why the cause of death, I mean, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, Parkinson's, you name it. These are all lifestyle, according to the doctors I read, lifestyle related diseases. In other words, choices. We have choices in these. And um, I'm going to quote a little bit of scripture here on this one. The Bible says that um, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that's what we're talking about. A little bit of knowledge. You think having a heart attack is one aspect of being destroyed? I tend to think so. Uh, and so some knowledge there. Another good one is uh, without vision, my people perish. 
So a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of vision. That's a, that kind of summarizes launch class, if you will. Help people have some of that to avoid some pitfalls and have more success in the seven areas, more abundant life. So that's physical. The mental, putting it all together. I touched on a few things already, but like I said, ideally with God. But thinking clearly and effectively. Um, because we don't learn that much from our family and in school. How to think clearly, how to discern between this direction or that direction. I'd love to get into some details here, but even just good habits. We talked about bad habits over here. Well, replacing with some good habits, what will happen? We'll feel so much better. That button pretty straightforward. Uh, making good decisions. Teachability. Teachability is a very interesting one, and that's why communities are being here. Because it shows you're more teachable than the average. You raise yourself above the crowd. But there's a, a book I heard. Uh, I heard a podcast here about two years ago. And it was uh, the guy who was interviewing this pastor, Matt Keller. And he wrote a book called uh, The Key to Everything. Which is quite a catchy title, isn't it? Key to Everything. Okay, what's the key to everything? It ended up being that word, teachability. And so I encourage you to make a decision. If you haven't already, choose to have that as a lifelong uh, attitude or pursuit. Teachability, be hungry for, for good knowledge. And that'll uh, help us a lot. Make good decisions, positive attitude. This is another key one, setting and achieving meaningful goals. We talk about where does happiness come from. Now we can talk about the seven areas, but this is one of the goals for happiness, right? I would say there's two big building blocks for happiness. One is relationships, and the other one is setting and achieving meaningful goals. And that's why next week we're going to talk about uh, people skills and relationships, because it's foundational for all the, well, not all the areas, but most of the areas. So setting and achieving meaningful goals. We're going to talk about goal setting and goal setting strategies. There's a study I've heard of, and many people have talked about this, that Harvard did a long time ago. It said 3% of people set goals, and those 3% achieve more than the other 97% combined. Sorry, they write down the goals. A lot of people set goals, but they write down the goals. So one of our classes, at least one of our classes in one class, will be just that. We're going to do a goal setting exercise. And we're going to work, we're going to write down our goals so that we have them, and then we can build on them from there. So that's the seven areas. How are we doing? Okay, so for most people, that includes us, coaches for sure, includes me for sure. We have big dreams and goals when we're in our early 20s, but then the realities of life beat us up, and we don't have much encouragement or direction or knowledge, so we lose sight of our dreams and just give up on them. The we'll launch class on to provide the missing encouragement, direction, and knowledge, so that you can experience a great life and success in all seven areas. Us older adults often say, if I only knew then, I know now. So we want you to know now what we wish we knew. So this is a good little saying here. There are two great days in a person's life. The day they're born, and the day they find out why. They figure out why. Which relates to the career side of things, interestingly. Uh, the studies have shown, this is what our, our leader from Institute used to say, for the career. The average person spends one third of their career trying to figure out what they should do. In other words, getting to the career that they, that they, they feel that is right for them. One third of their career they spend. So if we can help people to shorten that time frame, think how much more you can achieve. You identify the appropriate career, what you're wired to do, what you enjoy, etc. At a younger age, how much more can you achieve in your lifetime? So that's another one of our things we want to help you do. Discover, get a strong sense of purpose in your life, if you don't know where you know. Another large theme that we'll often talk about is people skills, which I said, lesson two. We want you to have confidence and skill with people in all circumstances. I'm passionate about that one too because I did not have that when I was in my early 20s. But that could go a long way in every area of life, especially career, especially family. And uh, some people have a good sense of that. Well, at least they have confidence, maybe not skill. We want you to have confidence and skill with people in all areas. So that'll go a long way. Okay, we're getting down to the bottom here. This is a funny little saying from Rick Warren. I'm not sure how much it applies. Life is like photography. You start with a negative and you can develop it into a positive. Does anybody here remember film, pictures, developing film? Probably not any students, right? So that's why it's not a very good analogy. But we get the idea. Life is like photography. You start with a negative, which can be like squeezing down on us. 
And we can develop into a positive if we turn right instead of turning left. Does that make sense? That's the first one. Learn to embrace adversity. That's another big principle. People skills is a big principle, and learning to embrace, embrace adversity is a big principle. Usually, I know when I was younger, I would try to avoid adversity, adversity right? So I guess the, the diagram is a little bit like avoiding adversity is turning left. Going towards the adversity is turning right. We want to learn to embrace adversity. That's how we grow. We need adversity to grow. We grow much better with adversity than without. And the butterfly is a perfect example. If we have a butterfly out of the little cocoon prematurely, it won't be strong enough to fly and it will die. So we need adversity to grow. If we, have, if we will have big goals, if we want to be an outstanding mother, father, husband, wife, a great career and business success, be a highly respected member of the community, we're going to have to learn to grow a lot. Which usually requires adversity. We don't grow that much during the good times. We grow a whole lot more during the tough times. So you can do well in adversity and experience peace in it if you go through it with God and others. So that's, that's the kind of foundational secret right there. We're not meant to do it alone. We're designed to go through life and to uh, have the abundant life and have the good stuff, the peace, happiness, confidence, fulfillment, if we go through it with God and others. We're not going to go well with others without those people's skills and confidence with people. That's the first piece. And uh, we're going to introduce God a little bit in this program, but not very much more than what I'm talking about right now. You can get a lot more depth going to church, but we're trying to talk about things that we don't know in church. Okay. When you get into a routine, I've touched on this already, like adding small wins on a regular basis. If you attend launch class, you find that your outlook on life will be more positive, that you really gain momentum, you gain confidence. And who knows that song, My Future's So Great, I Gotta Wear Shades. Anybody remember that? Probably no students. I heard it on the radio two weeks ago. <laughs> so we want your future to be so bright that you've got to wear shades. It's really a lifelong journey that we never fully arrived to. We think sometimes, when I get that car, when I get that spouse, when I get that, when I have kids, when I get that big job, we will have arrived and we'll be happy. Sorry to say, that's not how it works. We need to have goals and keep on setting goals. Remember one of our sources of happiness, setting and achieving meaningful goals? So we never fully arrive, which I think it seems that's how God designed it. And what would happen if we fully arrive? We have nothing to aim for. Life, as I've heard this said, if you try to coast, you'll start to stink. You'll start to, you know, I don't want to use those ugly words, but it's true. If we don't have a goal, something to shoot for, we just aren't happy and we're not good for, good for much, good for others, we start to stink. So start with, start with a small, just start small by the reality of self improvement and ends. I and those coaches have been on this journey for decades. Continually add new practices as we learn and progress. So we encourage you, if you haven't already done this, join us today. Decide to join us on this journey to your best self. So format for launch class, if you haven't picked it up already, start at 7, finish at 8.30. Come where, come whenever you want, frankly. You don't have to commit to being here like a normal program. Come and go as you like. Um, sit wherever you like. You don't have to sit in the same group every time. So we like to have a few rules here. One of our goals is to have food here. So we need to put a, a donate button on the website. So if anyone has some experience on websites, we can use some volunteers. So uh, the other piece I'll say, so first half is large group time, second half is small group time. The small group time is really where you get to uh, gather around the table and talk about and share some of, you know, some of the discussion questions, some of what we're talking about, and get good at articulating, talking about, uh, your views and what's going on, and, and hearing other people do the same. And that's really helpful. One of the most important things we can do is just talk about our goals, talk about our views, talk about our struggles, and gather around the table. That's when the real good stuff happens. So that's small group time. That's the second half. We won't have much small group time today, and uh, we'll have Q&A after this right now because we're recording this for the, for the website, so we won't do Q&A yet. We'll do some Q&A afterwards. Uh, and the small group will encourage you to make goals and plans based on what you learn. And ideally, we'd love for people to make a goal, set a goal, make a plan. This is a simple example. Let's just say you have a cousin that you had a run-in with two years ago. 
and you haven't talked to for two years. Just as an example. Well, guess what? In launch class, that's going to bring this cousin to your, to your thoughts because we're talking about relational challenges and having good relationships. So let's just say hypothetically you said, okay, I'm going to call my cousin. I'm going to walk through the corridor, the corridor of fear. I'm going to trust that God's with me. I'm going to trust he's going to give me some words to say. So if you set that goal last week, we want to hear about it this week so we can celebrate with you if you actually did it. We want to really encourage each other and celebrate our wins. That's another benefit of uh, launch class. So then after small group, we'll get back to large group. We'll have each of the small group share. That's what they talked about for the benefit of everybody. And then I'll wrap up and feel free to hang out for half an hour. We have this place till 8.30. So 6.30 to 8 is formal, and then we can hang out for half an hour, socialize, and if you want to chat with your coach or something a little bit further, you can do that. So summary, you can do it. There's an old saying, whatever the mind of man can achieve, it can endure. Whatever the mind of man can dream, it can achieve. Uh, so it is about you, it's for you. And the more you get, the more you'll get out of it. And so we have, one of the handouts you got is a little survey. This isn't it, but survey, we'd love to get your feedback. We've come up with some ideas that we think would be good for you to learn when you're getting going. But frankly, we're not living in your shoes, so we don't know who's going to come and what they're looking for. So give us the feedback on that survey, and we'll try to uh, find tune launch class for your benefit. The coaches are here voluntarily because we believe in your success. We want to help you get successfully launched into an exciting, impactful life. Ask us lots of questions, that'll be good. So learn, learn or pass it on, be part of the mission that's making a difference. Remember I talked about, you have one hand up learning, another hand passing it down. Be part of the mission to improve the quality of life for all our So let everybody know that you know about Launch Class, and invite a friend. So we talked about volunteering to help. We could use some help on social media marketing. We could use some help on video editing. We could use some help on website development. And we definitely want, we really appreciate Cocoa Books for Providing this facility for us, we want to leave it cleaner and then we arrive. Okay, QA, any questions? So now we're going to break into uh, small groups. So, what we'll try to do is gather around a table, uh, four to six people per table, one or two coaches per table, and then we'll go into these small group discussion questions. And we'll take about 15, 20 minutes to do that, then we'll come back to small group. All right, thanks, guys.